Welcome back to How This Mom Does It, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I organize and store our homeschool work. If you're interested in seeing how I organize it and put it all together, stay tuned. So to keep us organized in our homeschool, I have three basic ways to organize us. It all starts with the lesson plan. So um, I started off with the paper lesson plan a few years ago, and it just, when we started, I tried different ones, and I couldn't find anything that worked for me. Um, I couldn't find anything online that worked for me. I finally just ended up creating my own spreadsheet, and it just, it's just work, what works best for me. So basically, this is my plan for a week. And the spreadsheet has tabs at the bottom. Each tab is a different week. And I can go through, I can print it, I can email it, I can change it easily, I can save it so that I can use this year's, so this would be our second grade um, lesson plans. I can save this for my son. So when he come, goes into second grade, I already have this plan already made up. I don't have to rewrite it out. I just have to make any changes. If we change... Um, a piece of curriculum or something like that, I can change it really easily and just print it. So I really like that. So this is um, the first piece of what we use and I will be doing a video um, on this. So keep an eye um, out for that if you're interested in learning more about how I use my spreadsheet. The second thing that we use is our workbox carts and we use a 10 drawer rolling cart and I will be doing a video on that coming up but basically that just stores all of our work that is um, that is not in the binder. Um, so any workbooks that I don't tear apart for some reason, um, any puzzles that we're working through that week, um, anything like that. And I have it divided up by subjects. And I will be doing a video um, on my preschoolers work workbox drawers, basically, because um, his are a little bit different. And then also my uh, daughter's, the second grader, first slash second grader. Um, drawers as well so you can see how I organize that so that will be coming up soon uh, so keep an eye out for that but in today's video I'm going to be covering um, the third thing that I use which is our binders and this has saved me a lot of time and stress and it just makes things so much easier for us so I'm going to be sharing with you our binders today this is my August binder and what I do is I have one binder per month and I do um, covers and sides to them. Um, I use a three inch binder per month and I just find some fun clip art and make my own um, cover sheets and sides just to make it cute. Um, when things are cute we're more apt to use them so um, I just like to do that for fun but you don't have to. And basically so one one binder per month and I will have in it anything that we're supposed to be completing for that month so any extras. We're going to be doing like an all about me book I have our weekly readers, I have a um, Ranger Rick magazine that I'm wanting her to read. So anything that I can pull out just to have it ready to go, if it's not going into her work cart because we're not ready to do it, then um, I will keep it in the binder so I don't forget about it. So that's um, what I use that for. And then the rest of this is um, tabbed and it is divided up by subject and it actually goes directly with my spreadsheet. So I don't have them labeled. You could label if you decide to do a binder method. I find I didn't need to, and I like to be able to change it around if I need to as well, and um, labeling just um, took a little more time than I was wanting to spend on it. But um, it goes in order of my spreadsheet, so I automatically know the first tab is my handwriting. The second, you know, it's it, it, it goes in order. So basically, the first tab would be our handwriting, and it's empty because we use Zaner Blozer, and I don't want to take apart their workbook, but we do do additional handwriting practice that I find um, from time to time, so I do leave a space for it. Um, on Teachers Pay Teachers, there's some great um, history-based uh, and science-based uh, handwriting where it has a coloring page and um, some handwriting that goes along with it, so I like to keep that blank in case um, I need that section. And then um, I have phonics. And then this is actually, we. in addition to our plaid phonics, we do the Houghton Mifflin textbook from our charter. My daughter likes it, so we add it in because she likes it. 
Um, so I leave this blank. I actually just got the practice book today, so I will be tearing that apart and putting um, the whatever we're supposed to do for the first um, four weeks because it goes in four-week blocks with our charter school. So that's kind of how I organize our binder. So it matches as I do it in four-week blocks. So that will go in here. And then I have our spelling, and um, I'm not going to take apart spelling this year, I think. I may. I did last year, um, the spelling workout book. I just have a, a copy of the cover, so I know what it is. And then I have um, some second grade words I must know that I found online. And um, I have some spelling practice pages. Um, spelling workout doesn't really give you a, um, just copying practice. And I found that my daughter needed that for a couple words last year, so we're going to give that a try this year. And we used these spelling tests from Teacher Pay Teachers last year, and um, we're going to use those again. It's a coloring page, theme coloring pages with the spelling tests attached to them. So um, that's what we're going to be using for that. And then um, I have next the lap books and um, literature units and literature studies that we do. And for the month of August, we're going to be doing a lap book on chrysanthemum and that I got from homeschool share um, and we do that one this will be our third year doing it it's really fun and then I have a second literature unit where I found this on teacher pay teachers we're going to be doing um, a unit on one of our read alouds Goonie Bird Green and so basically I put those there so any literature unit information or lap books that were going to be completed I already have them printed out and ready to go so I just have to grab them when it comes time for that and then the next I have our themed monthly writing assignments, and I have a um, Teacher Pay Teachers um, site that I like, and um, we do all of her monthly um, monthly writing assignments, and they're all themed per each month, and that's where I keep that. And then we do our grammar minutes, and this is actually finishing up some minutes that we um, were left over from last year before we go into this year's uh, grammar minutes, and I already have the cover printed for when I start putting in the grammar minutes for this year. And then we do a daily math review in addition to Math Mammoth. Um, and it's just some, um, and I've tried different math reviews uh, or math meetings, however you want to call it. Um, this one I really like and it has a different variety of them so it changes up depending on the level your child's at. So I found these on Teacher Pay Teachers. Can you tell I like Teachers Pay Teachers? Um, but I found these, and we're going to be doing those this year. We did that last year, and we really like that. And then I have our math minutes, and those are already in there and ready to go for this month. Sorry to pull that out. And then um, another thing that I found, we did the my, my number writing book, number one, last year. And she wrote her numbers one to a thousand. This year we're going to be doing a thousand to two thousand. And this is a pretty cool um, little... Um, writing book that I got off of Teachers Pay Teachers. So this section is where I put anything that um, is extra. So seasonal math, like fun math, extra worksheets will go here. And then I have our Math Mammoth, and that's already printed and ready to go for the month. And then I have our Science, and we're doing Biology for the Grammar stage. And that is all printed and ready to go. And I also got the coloring pages and the lap books for that. So everything is in here and ready to go. And the lap book pages are in here as well, divided up by section um, as it goes along uh, in our lesson plan. Um, but it's already divided up and ready to go. So I just have to go in order. And then we have our section for story of the world. And I have that already printed for the entire month. And I've actually found a really cool organizer a lady was very, very nice um, and put this together, and it's I got it for free online. And it lines out everything in the Story of the World activity book. It doesn't give you what's in the, the um, activity book, but it helps you organize it better. Um, and it, she makes writing pages for the narrations. It just makes it look so much nicer. So I printed out her organizer, and then all the pic pages from the... Um, from the Story of the World activity book, and they're all ready to go. And then I have our review cards for Story of the World already um, printed on cardstock and put in a little um, little sheet protector. And then I have extra um, tabs at the end. Sometimes, um, different months, I do do different extra 
things like we do Constitution Day or if we do uh, presidents or um, we'll do um, uh, women in history and national or inventors. We do diff lots of different um, extra units. And so I like to have extra tabs for when we do things like that. August is pretty straightforward because we're doing back to school, but um, I do usually incorporate other things. So I have lots of extra tabs. And then at the back, I have um, all of our craftivities, and that's a craft with like a writing activity um, kind of built into it. And I get a lot of those for free, like Pinterest or Teachers Pay Teachers. And um, I have those already printed and ready to go for the month. So that is basically how I organize our to be completed and completed work. Once my daughter, com I take this out and give her the work and put it in her binder to complete for the week or the day, depending on how I give it to her. Um, once it's completed, it goes right back into the binder in the same, um, same section, and it's already filed and ready to go. So when we meet with our charter, because we do meet once a month, um, it's I just basically bring the binder and any workbooks that aren't um, torn apart, like the that are still intact, I'll bring all that with me, and my spreadsheet, and I have basically everything I need. So it makes it really easy and simple, and it's I always stay organized. I know where everything's at. We don't have a school room, so um, I keep my binder and then my daughter's work binder that I'm going to show you in just a minute. I keep those um, up on our kitchen counter. I have a little homeschool command center, we like to call it. And I have my binder, her binder, and um, a little organizer that I keep. Um, and it makes it really easy and quick, and it doesn't take up a lot of space because we don't have a lot of space. So um, that's how I organize our to-be-completed and completed work for each month. And I will have one binder again for each month. So by the end of the year, I will have a binder for each month we did school. And I can just store those if I choose or... If you don't like to keep your work, um, then you could just recycle the binders for next year and just keep a couple papers. So that's how I organize the binders. And lastly, this is my daughter's work binder. So this is what she does her work out of. So the monthly binder is for me, that's how I store our work to be completed and completed. And this is what she actually does the work out of. So I will go each week or day, depending on what she's working on, and pull from the spreadsheet what I need from the binder. So I'll look on the spreadsheet and whatever it says I need, I will pull out of the monthly binder and then put it in her binder for her to complete. Once her work is complete, then she gives it back to me and I will check it off, grade it, and then I file it back in the monthly binder and it's good. So there's not papers floating around. Um, I try to have everything filed away each night if possible, um, but if not, they just stay in her binder until I'm ready to grade them. Um, so it makes it really easy. There's not a lot of paper. Again, we don't have a school room, so I don't have a lot of storage space. I need things to be neat and organized and um, so we don't lose things. <laughs> so that's how we do it. And her binder has a couple things in it, like she has a phonics and spelling dictionary. And I got these at a school supply store and they basically um, are dictionaries but it has a place where you can write the words in yourself if you find a word that isn't in here, and I like that. We have some stickers to put on her work, and then um, she has a word wall, and I got this from um, this idea from Heidi Songs, and the printables are actually from Heidi Songs, and um, she used it in a classroom setting so that kids aren't distracted by other kids where they kind of put it up as a divider, but I just put it in a folder and stick it in here, and she can put it up in front of her while she's writing. Now these words are a little more basic. So this is basically for last year when we were really working on beginning writing. Um, but there's still some words on here that she probably will forget. Um, but this is really great for a beginning writer. And then she just decorated it with stickers to make it fun. And then also in here um, I have a, an atlas that I got at a used bookstore just to have for reference. And then we have some songs and things that we go through for writing as a good reminder and then after the tab is where I put all of her work so whatever work she will have for the week will be there and then once it's completed she just lets me know and then I file it away after I grade it so that's basically it that's how we keep it all organized at the end of the school year I will have a binder per month of completed work to file and um, it makes it really easy this is the same binder we used last year it's in good condition um, 
I don't let her play with it. It stays um, put up on the counter with my binder. So, um, yep, it, it's pretty easy and simple. And I will be getting up videos on my lesson planning spreadsheet and the, the 10 drawer workbox carts. Um, as soon as I can, so be on the lookout for those. And so basically, will... this is how I organize our homeschool. I have our monthly binders. I have one binder per month, and it stores our work that is to be completed as well as completed. I have my daughter's work binder, and that is what she works out of uh, for each week. All the daily work that she does. Once it's completed, then we store it in the um, binder for that month. And then I have my lesson plan, and that is what tells us what work to pull out of the binder to put into my daughter's work binder. So that is basically how I keep us organized. If you like this video, click like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.